What's up guys, Eric here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the CW and maybe some good news for future programming that we might all love. Or it could be bad news, but I'm gonna go into it optimistically and hope for the best. We also have a couple of things from DC and Warner Brothers that I wanna talk about at the end of this video, but let's go ahead and talk about this article from Deadline about the CW specifically. So it says the CW widens programming scope to include sitcoms and procedurals, begins testing outside studio deals with the Hatpin Society from EP Rachel Bloom. So this means that they are starting to like pull things that are not from uh, their two parent companies. And this is something we suspected. I didn't think it was gonna happen this quickly, but here we are. So it says exclusive, by the next, by the time the next star media group's long in the work, 75% acquisition of the CW finally closed earlier this month. It was at the height of a pitch season when broadcast networks buy scripted projects to develop as new series for next season. On the morning of August 15th, the August 15th deal announcement, Next Star Topper said that under the new ownership, the CW would be going for broader and cheaper programming, including syndicated fair acquisitions with the goal to make up to make the network profitable by, by 2025. And we already talked about this. The CW and its original concept was not something that needed to make a profit, but the new owners want to make money. So therefore, they're going to be trying to find ways to turn over revenue for the CW itself. Since then, sources tell Deadline the CW brass have reached out to the creative community, including agency meetings, to lay out their buying strategy going forward and tell everyone that the network is open for business. On the original scripted programming side, in addition to the CW signature genre shows and teen soaps, that's a good thing, signature genre show, in addition to CW signature genre shows, that's, again, good thing for us, which the network intends to keep doing, just not as many, it plans to broaden its slate by adding procedurals and other older skewing dramas, as well as half-hour comedies, including multi-camera multi sitcoms. Now, this part here, this, this right here is the part that I'm pretty excited about, um, is that they say, I'm going to highlight it, that they are going to keep doing these uh, signature genre shows, just not as many. So the reason why I think that's good for us as viewers of the CW is that this means that they very well might keep Superman and Lois and Stargirl. They might not add anything new for a while, but they plan on keeping that kind of stuff. I hope that they're committed to that. I really do. <laughs> really, really do. Because the second part here, the second part here about adding procedurals and older skewing dramas and half hour comedies has me a little concerned. Uh, the overall message was bring us what you brought to the CW4, but also bring us what you wouldn't have brought to us in the past. So they're just open for just about anything. Uh, this jives with Next Star's brass comments that the demographic focus of the CW will change over time. I'm hoping that it's not skewing older. Indicating that the new owners would be emphasizing on the older skew linear network versus digital, where the vast majority of younger viewers watch CW shows. Next Star president and COO Tom Carter noted that while the CW's current slate of shows like Riverdale, All America, The Flash, Target viewers and 18 to 35 demographic, the average uh, CW linear viewer is 58 years old. So this is why that's concerning, because they're looking at the live viewership and not the streaming. And networks have to realize that streaming content, content on demand, is literally the future of programming. Watching things live on a global scale is not a good business strategy. And they are trying so desperately, Hollywood is trying so desperately to hold on to that business model. Anyway, the network's new programming strategy is looking to embrace these older linear viewers and trying to expand the pool. Uh, the network has done that with occasionally with specials, the Walton's Holiday Movies, as well as the Critics' Choice Awards. I don't have a problem with the, an award show here and there. On the acquisition side, the CW is also expected to go for broader shows, including procedural dramas. For years, the network has been supplementing its originals with mostly Canadian and UK scripted shows. Now, this is really bad for international um, content makers. Not that they won't pick up those shows, but yes, um, like Vancouver itself was bumping with a lot of content that specifically went to stuff like the CW and not having that outlet is going to make it very difficult for them to continue to um, to make that kind of money and have that kind of content put out there. Uh, the CW's unscripted strategy is not changing. The network has been uh, betting on broad shows such as Penn and Teller Foolish and World's Funniest Animals. I hate those things. Um, and there will be more of that going forward. Yuck, yuck, yuck. 
Um, and then here it goes. Uh, the, this will remain in place for the 2023 season, 22, 23 season as the vast majority of programming has already been spoken for beyond that next year. We'll have the option to extend the partnership with the studios. Carter said that post deal closed, uh, but noted with the situation is very much in flux. The company's executives have indicated the CW would be open to outside suppliers moving forward. And that's because, um, I don't think shows like, like the ones that we have now, I don't think that the CW wants to foot the bill for all of those shows. I think they want the studios to start forking over more money. And um, yeah, and this Hat Pin Society, it was uh, sold directly to the network, which plans to develop it in-house before finding a studio partner. That could end up being CBS Studios, which produced Bloom's Crazy Ex-Girlfriend or WBTV. But it doesn't have to be. A major departure from the business principles on which the CW was founded is that it ushers in a new era as an independent. Uh, inviting third-party studios into the tent will also likely alter the CW streaming profile. Previous seasons of the network's scripted series are currently available primarily on Netflix or HBO, and this will allow them to put it on their own streaming service, which is why I think moving away from the idea of streaming as a metric is a bad idea for the CW, I would say. Uh, the CW's longtime chairman and CEO, Mark Petowitz, who is remaining at the helm for the network under new owners, has extensive experience overseeing content for broad broadcast audiences, including his stint as president of the main ABC supplier, ABC Studios, now ABC Signature. And this is an interesting comment here. I think you'll always see a decent amount of scripted programming on the network. I think you'll see, and we've already begun the transition to more alternative, and we'll begin bringing more acquired programming, he said in May, as the next star acquisition will still being finalized. I do hope that we will enter the world of half-hour sitcoms being produced for the network, yuck. And I do hope we should, should be a sale, and if there is a sale, that it will be open the avenues of other producers and studios to come to us besides Warners and CBS, which means more opportunities. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's absolutely fine. Um... I think half hour sitcoms are old school. Um, and maybe that's what they're trying to do. There's a lot more here. I will link the article down below. But ultimately, I think what we what we can say taking away from this uh this article is it looks as of right now, they intend to continue making shows in the genres that we love, just not as many. So we may not see a ton of spinoffs um of those properties. So I think Justice U is a big stretch. Um, I think maybe we're just going to have Stargirl, Gotham Knights, and Superman and Lois for a while, unless something else comes along. We might actually get other things. Like, it might not be just the Berlanti stuff, which I think is quite interesting. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is a statement that came from a variety piece here, and I want to share this so we can talk about this for a moment. Um, here it goes. Uh, Warner Brothers insiders are reportedly saying that Zack Snyder's Justice League never should have happened since it further divided the fan base against the studio. Now, before I give my opinion on this in detail, I want to say that I loved the movie, the four hour movie, whatever you want to call it, miniseries, um, whatever. I, I loved it. I thought it was really good. It was a million times better than the theatrical release. But I do realize it was an anomaly. It's something that doesn't normally happen. And, it, you know, Zach finally got to finish what his vision of this would have been. All of those are positives. The negatives to that is this statement is absolutely true. As someone who loves DC and Marvel, I feel like it's so weird as a fan of that content to fight with each other over stuff that we love. It's so weird. I, every day, almost every day on Twitter and sometimes on TikTok and other places, I find myself fighting with people about getting more content that we love. It's like one group is okay with things moving forward. The other group wants things to go back to the way they were. And it's just constant infighting. And when the Zack Snyder Justice League was announced, there was a huge, massive fallout within the fandom that is still prevalent today. Again, almost every day I see arguments about this on social media, specifically this, because people want to believe that this new, um, you know, this new regime over at uh, Warner brothers discovery is somehow going to bring this back. And it's just, it's, it's a constant battle. So as happy as I was to see it finished and, and we finally got to see the, the cyborg story, which I think was excellent. And we got to see more of the Flash, which I think actually really helped that character as well. And the changes to Steppenwolf, all those things were really good. I think ultimately it ended up really putting a, a line down the center of the fans. And I don't know if it was the fault of the film. 
it could just be the fandom itself. I'm curious what you think. So let me know in the comments below um, your thoughts on that one. All right. Last thing I want to talk about is something from discussing film. And this is quite interesting. Um, I'm not going to pull up the article, but I'm going to pull up the, the tweet here so we can look at this. Um, and maybe we'll talk about the article on the live stream. Legendary Entertainment is planning to move on from Warner Brothers and make a deal to develop films with either Sony or Paramount. The company has worked with Warner Brothers on Dune and the MonsterVerse films. And this is huge. This is huge. So all the people that are that are still saying like, oh, just wait, just wait and see. It's going to be better. It's going to be better. When major studios are pulling out from working with Warner Brothers and they're losing stuff like this, that's a problem. And you need to open your eyes and see that, that what's happening with Warner Brothers Discovery is not a good thing. From a creative standpoint, it is the worst thing. If you're all about corporations, you know, just basically cutting everything creative just to make money and you don't care about the content they're putting out, which is weird because why would you if you don't work for Warner Brothers Discovery? But if you care about the content that is coming out and you care about the way people are treated, the creative people are treated, then you should you should look at this and this should concern you. This is the result of everything that's going on with David Zaslav right now at Warner Brothers Discovery. This is not the end of it. There's going to be more of this. The this is called this is basically lack of faith and confidence in the studio. So they don't believe the CEOs. Let's put this in perspective here. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Let's put this in perspective here. Wall Street doesn't believe them. Hollywood doesn't believe them. A lot of other people in the industry don't believe them. And now we have the creatives pulling away and saying we don't believe you. Who's wrong? Who's wrong here? The person that made 90 Day Fiance a hit? That's the person you're going to believe over all of these creative people that are saying this isn't going to work? Yeah. All right. All right, that's where I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> We're going to end this here. Uh, anyway, yes. Uh, give me your thoughts and opinions on all of this. I am curious to what you think about everything. Um, let's see where, where we at, where we at, there we are, there we are. I think this is the right one. I hope it's the right one. Uh, make sure you leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about the CW stuff. Are you happy? Does it make you feel better? Do you think the, that Superman and Lois, uh, Stargirl and Gotham Knights are in good hands moving forward? What do you think about the Zack Snyder Justice League, uh, comment about it being divisive amongst fans and being a bad idea? Do you agree or disagree with that? And what do you think about Legendary pulling away from Warner Brothers Discovery and moving on to something else? Very curious about your thoughts and opinions and all that. So leave it down below and I'll see you in the next video.